Younger women diagnosed with breast cancer are finding a controversial way of beating the disease. They are taking drastic measures to make sure the cancer doesn't come back. And Frank, you know, I found out that the trend of double mastectomies has given one woman a sense of hope and freedom. But the question here really is, is why have a double mastectomy when you don't need one? You have one breast affected with cancer, so that's the one that you remove, right? Well, and not the healthy one as well. Um, you know, there is a new study that points out that this is a growing trend. Take a look. You don't expect to see a woman in her early 30s to view a double mastectomy in a positive light. But to Kim Reed, it was the only way that made her feel like she could get her life back. Kim was diagnosed with breast cancer last year at the age of 30. They told me that I was going to have to have the left side removed. And at that point, I wanted both breasts removed because I wanted to take away any risk of it coming back. According to a new study from the Journal of Oncology Online, Kim is not alone in taking this preventative measure. There's a segment of young American women that have been diagnosed with breast cancer confined to one breast that have been opting to have their healthy breast removed as well. And according to this study, it is up at an alarming rate. It's up 150% from the years of 1998 to 2003. It's alarming in the sense it's normal, healthy tissue, and it's an unnecessary procedure. Through a simple blood test, a patient yeah, can find her. out if you she has the breast cancer gene 1 or 2. If she tests positive, there is a 60% chance a second cancer can develop again. I think what we're finding in Los Angeles is, again, the woman who is already facing mastectomy in one breast, or she's going to have reconstruction as part of that, often decides to have both at the same time. Now, if she is a gene carrier for BRCA1 or 2, that may be a very rational decision. But this generation of women, like Kim, are using the internet to make their decisions. I mean, my reality was when I went online and I saw that my survival rate after five years is only 40%. That's when it hit home, and that's when I made the decision. However, genetic counseling with someone like Joyce Selden is highly advised before making any decisions. Selden is part of the UCLA team at the Johnson's Comprehensive Cancer Center where they discuss the pros and cons of prophylactic or preventative surgeries. In the genetic counseling session when we're discussing the potential of the prophylactic surgeries, it's also important to emphasize that neither, you know, removing your breasts or removing your ovaries will reduce your risk to zero. Even so, Kim has taken the extra measure to do just that and remove her healthy ovaries as well. And that was the decision I struggled with the most because I always thought I would have kids. Once you've lost your ovaries, you can't get them back. Though Kim's ovaries are gone, improvements of mastectomies and breast reconstruction have given her a chance to reclaim her feminine sexuality. For me, I felt like every time I stood in front of a mirror, for me to have to stand in front of the mirror and be constantly reminded of it every day was something I, I just couldn't do. And so I knew that the only way I wanted to go through the mastectomy was to have immediate reconstruction. The skin of the breast, the cleavage is all preserved, and what would have been excess skin is used to encompass the new breast tissue, whether it's an implant or fat tissue. But the process has been daunting. It's just, it, it's very traumatic. I don't think most people realize that the reconstruction itself is done in stages. You have a incision that's about six inches long across your breast and you have no nipple. And, um, you know, no areola, you have to go back, you have to have tattooing done. Um, you have to have a nipple reconstructed. However, things are starting to feel a little bit more like the life she has strived so hard to save. She has a new relationship. Though she can't have kids, she is back teaching at Millican Junior High. Whenever I have that desire to be the mother, I can step into a classroom and do what I feel like I was here to do. But most of all, she is a survivor, knowing that she is living because she took her life into her own hands. Hmm. Uh, and you were saying that it's not for everyone, though, right? No, it's not. You know, and it's one of those, um, you know, situations that 
you know, she already had stage three breast cancer in one breast. Mm -hmm. And so for her to remove the second breast that was healthy, I mean, really the chances were that it was going to come to the other side anyhow. Right. Um, unfortunately, it seems that the trend is not happening with women that have that kind of um, late stage breast cancer. It's happening with women that find out that they just have the breast cancer gene. And that's what's so alarming about this trend. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this woman, Kim, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. We do appreciate it. Yeah. You know, also went the second extra step, and that's also something that is alarming, and that is the removal of her healthy ovaries. But when it comes to ovarian cancer, it's very difficult to detect, so it's understandable why she would go um, to that to that point to take these drastic measures in order just to survive and live day to day. Very interesting story.